Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. The traitors. The traitors. Hey y'all, hey. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura, and we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even mafia with reality TV stars. We love to watch, and we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching... The Traitors, the Traitors. US, uh, Season 2 of Peacock's new hit reality show. So yes. good, y'all. You're in for so a treat today. Good. Yes. So <laughs> before we get into it... First, make sure you give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you stream Sisters Who Watch, and make sure you check us out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And follow us on all social medias, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, we're there, all at Sisters Who Watch. Okay, Shelby, big day. Very exciting. two special guests with us. Yes, we have Chris and Wahima from the DocuSweeties podcast. Yay! Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you for you. being here, ladies. Now we'd love for y'all to introduce yourselves, let the people know who you are, where they can find you. First of all, thank you so much for inviting us on your show. We got to meet you, Shelby, when we were at Podcast Movement, which is a convention for podcast yes. uh, peeps. And we had so much fun in your effortlessly you know charming and like i mean effusive with your light so like we just met and we were just like oh absolutely Aww. let's just hang out and like do something together it took a second so but we actually got it done which makes which you know cements that we actually we got it done at the end of the day we're docky sweeties and then this is one of my best friends and that's wahama over there and then, then i'm chris and then we also Hi. do similar things where we get together just like friends do just like sisters do and watch things we love watching <laughs> docu-series of both the trashy kind of like 90 day fiance world is like our bread and butter love after lockup of course mm -hmm. 90 day fiance has single life has happily ever after has before the 90 days honey there's the other way there's everything and then the we things. also like doing the bingeable <laughs> culty either murdery or crazy or whatever so Gunther's Millions or uh, The Curious Case of mm -hmm. Natalia Grace. We've done like American Nightmare on Netflix, just all of those kind of like bingeable ones. We are docu mm -hmm. at Docu Sweeties. Wherever you listen to podcasts, of course, Apple, Spotify. We also are on all the social medias as Docu Sweeties. We love sharing on Instagram. And so uh, this has been such a, isn't this fun? It's such a fun world where you get to like watch things and like yes. comment on them. And thank you, ladies, um, again for being here. We're so excited. <laughs> So yeah. we should dive right in. As always, we're going to give the log line for the content we're going to be discussing today. So everybody, mm -hmm. here is the log line for the Traders US. Contestants in the game move into a majestic castle and work as a team to complete a series of dramatic and challenging missions to earn money for the prize pot. Mm -hmm. Some contestants are loyal. Some are traitors. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. did you guys play mafia in college or high school i did i definitely played growing up i played sometimes in college too yeah like you were sitting around in a circle and mm -hmm. then you have to close your eyes and two people were you know like the killers the murderers and then someone's like someone was the narrator and be like well this person mm -hmm. woke up and killed this person in the middle of the night and it's a whole like story mm -hmm. time thing yeah it's <laughs> wild i yes <laughs> yes i'm a theater kid so i played mafia in college mm. um and it it is a fantastic game and i'm very good at it Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I also played it. And also people have played a version of it you could do that was like called Werewolf, which is basically the same rules, but a different aesthetic. Ooh. It's a fun game yeah. of like strat strategy that is kind of a little bit reminiscent, I guess, of Big Brother in that you have to be influential and talk where people trust you. Um, mm -hmm. But then they added a whole bunch of other elements that made it fun. I mean... And then the added layer of like the Scottish Highland element, it was like oh everyone gosh. came, everyone was like understood the assignment. I mean, did I like in my mind, I'm like, did they all have a costume budget of a million dollars? Or like everyone, you all get a million, honey, just like in here is a designer's gonna like pack you the bags of your life. Like everyone looked on point. 
speaking of fashion, um, we do have a lot of plaid on today. If you guys are watching us in honor of the Scottish Highlands, in honor of Alan Cumming, the amazing host of the Traders, who just always slayed his fits. I was so impressed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So this season, season two, and season one, we're both on Peacock, which I have to say... For a streamer, Peacock is coming in hot. So they got some good content on Peacock. So really? Traders is up there. Um, uh, so did y'all watch season one? Like, what were your expectations coming into season two? Uh, Chris told me about s season two. So then I went on to Peacock and I and I started watching what I thought was the first was oh. season two. Like she, like I didn't know that there was a season one. So let me just say that. And I started watching it. And so I got into like episode four when I realized that there was no Phaedra. And I was like, I don't understand what I'm watching. <laughs> but it was interesting. And so mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, I'm watching it. There was a season one? How come I didn't know about the season one? I love you. I'd be like, Phaedra's coming at some point. Just like episode two, you're like, does she just, does she just get recruited? <laughs> she just pops out? Like you're just like, did I miss her? You know, just like, yeah, I didn't know about the show at all until I feel like suddenly pop culture you know became aware i feel like everywhere i went it was like are you watching traders and on our end we just discovered about the traders over the holidays i don't know Me how too? we heard about it maybe we were on peacock yeah like, so like oh, i yeah. i introduced the family to traders i can take credit for this <laughs> okay laura <laughs> so, yes because it's true so <laughs> I so I was listening to the podcast Reasonably Shady. So for my Bravo fans, that's Giselle and Robin from the Real Housewives of Potomac. They have a podcast together. It's very funny. And they consistently talk about the shows that they watch. And they're like, the traders is so good. And this was like last year, you know, I think over the summer. In the fall, they announced the cast for the traders for season two. And I saw that Pilot Pete was on it, Phaedra, Sheree. Queen, Sheree. The cast was stacked. And I was like, I gotta watch this. I was like, Giselle and Robin were talking about it. Like, I gotta, I gotta get into it. So I was like, guys, we gotta watch the traders. Can we just watch the pilot and see how we like it? And we immediately were hooked. Immediately. Oh, yeah. We watched it and we were obsessed. And we I think we watched the whole season one in either one day or two days. Like, it was crazy. I think it was two days, but we binged it. So we were ready for season two because that was maybe a month before season two came out. So, um, so yeah, we recently discovered it. Love season one. Had a great finale. Like, love. It was so, so good. Um, so coming in, expectations were high for this. I was yeah. like, the cast is stacked. Yeah, I know, Shelby, you went to a special event for the Traders, too. And you got yes. to meet the celebrities. When I got back to LA after seeing the family for the holidays, um, Peacock was hosting a advanced like, screening of the pilot of the Traders season two with a Q&A with Johnny Bananas and Peppermint. And spoiler alert, just so happens, those two people were like the first two people to get out on the show. Didn't mm -hmm. know that at the mm -hmm. time. But mm -hmm. it was, like, so good to, like, be in a room of people, like, watching the show. It was so entertaining. And it was interesting hearing perspective of people who are in the house. And, like, Johnny Bananas hated Dan. He was like, Dan's the worst. I think Dan headed out for me. I know. It was, like, so interesting. I and love that. at that point, I didn't know Peppermint would get out. But the way Peppermint was talking, it felt like, her time on the show was short lived and like she wasn't really able to represent herself like she had hoped. Peppermint <gasps> got herself out. No. No. no oh, she didn't. really? Oh, okay. Michelle did. No, I mean, she did. She did. She called herself a traitor. She was doing too much talking. She, and she was doing too much talking, trying to be fabulous. And I was like, girl, this is not that reality show. I get why you're trying to be fabulous and talking, but this is not that show. And so she mm. came in with a bad, like, and then that chocolate brown onesie or one piece was not doing her any favors. I mean, she looked terrible in it. Oh, it was just not, it was ill-fitted. And I said, girl, you know, if Michelle Visage isn't here to read you, don't worry. Waha Molino is. Oh. <laughs> that chocolate brown with that damn belt attached to it, I was like, ew, Ew! I, you, okay, you were in the Scottish Highlands, so you thought I'm gonna come here in that outfit? No, wrong, wrong place, wrong country, wrong time period. Oh no! Okay. I wasn't offended by the chocolate brown outfit, but I will say 
I was so excited about Peppermint. I love, I'm a big RuPaul's Drag Race fan. Girl, I couldn't be bigger. Okay, I'm glad we're on the same page. And I was so excited that Peppermint was on. Like, she's one of, you know, the most popular contestants from Drag Race. And when she got eliminated at first, I was so upset. I was so upset. But I do agree. She was doing too much. She put her foot in her mouth. So I don't blame them for voting her out. I just personally was really upset by that. Yeah, I was sad about it. And then I finished watching the whole season and I was like, oh, she would not have lasted. She would not have lasted. Okay. Like I- Her outfit, now that I see it again, not the best. Mama. Not the best. And you're not even seeing the bottom part, which is the worst part of it. <laughs> you're seeing the better part of it. I, well, I she's, see what you're saying. Is this some kind of 70s superhero? What is she doing? Where is she? Where's her cape? Is she going to fly somewhere? Mm, you're not wrong. <laughs> I just wouldn't what? think that she would be a traitor. That's why I wouldn't have voted her out. I'm, I guarantee you, most of those people did not know who she was. Because because she's not even a newer uh, RuPaul, Ru girl. She's like season... Nine? Nine or ten? No, I, I love the Drag Race rant. I definitely feel you. Just I didn't also feel like anyone would know Deontay. I mean, did I, I, just because I don't know sports. I mean, I can't imagine anyone knows Deontay. They're all reality stars. Like, is he that big of a boxer? Yeah. So, I mean, like... Why would I would think Deontay be the him. first to go because people like no one knows him and he's got he's an athlete he's an actual like strong person you know but nothing no one mm-hmm. nothing touched my heart more in those early episodes than how much he, how sad he was when Peppermint left like to see the devastation oh, re- reign over Deontay as he realized that Peppermint left I mean <laughs> I was like I don't know you I love you but okay. at the reunion. Andy was like, hey, like, what was going on? You had to leave. He was just like, I didn't anticipate this being so emotional and stressful. Like, I just had to step back from my own mental health. And I really relied on Phaedra. Like, she was my mom in here. And she, like, always looked out for me. I just think he wasn't in the right mind headspace, you know, to handle but, the deception uh, and the lying uh, and stuff. Poor, poor thing. I hope he gets You help. know, I, one thing I will say about Deontay is that at least the outfit that he wore in the reunion was great. I'm always yeah. looking for men men's wear that like elevates Mm -hmm. um and it's sometimes hard right because what can you do with a suit or tuxedo and i think that this show at least with alan and the way deontay showed himself at the reunion gave us like some hope for men's fashion Mm -hmm. 100 percent wear yeah it's good stuff they stepped it up Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Yes. Okay, let's dive in. There's so much to discuss. So some of the main themes of this season, of course, are strategy, a big talk, especially in the reunion, talking about gamers versus non-gamers, the housewives versus the big brother people, all of that. And of course, lots of, there were a lot of alliances this season. Compared to season one, it was really, there were some groups, but this season, stark alliances, right? The Bravo ladies, the Peter Pals, the challenge squad. So yeah, what were some of your favorite moments just from the seasons, things that stuck out to y'all? The bird call, the bird <laughs> call episode where they all had That's to like, caca, caca, into, uh, the, because it, you know, it's, it's so funny that like the housewives were just so notoriously bad at everything. I mean, they couldn't read a map. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't do anything. And so to have like a challenge that actually leveled the playing field was actually nice to see that, you know, folks, Kevin and the, it was just like Kevin and the housewives couldn't do anything. (laughs) And it so like, it was just nice to be able to even the playing field because I mean, CT was just running them bitches over. Literally. in the bird challenge, Sheree and Kevin were paired together. And I was like, that's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, my God. Sheree was, was the most useless. And I, as I'm watching it, I was like, okay, if I wanted to be an unsuspecting traitor, I would have to embody Sheree. It's just like someone who has no game. And is None. just like, well, what do we do? And so she managed to stay as long as she stayed because they knew oh, no. she wasn't a fucking traitor because she was just so dumb. Yeah. Vedra kept her there, I think, because she was a traitor angel. Traitor angel, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the funeral was, like, otherworldly. Like, I think... Amazing. But 
I couldn't get over how dramatic and intense it felt, even though we all know, like, no one's getting buried, you know, whatever. Like, we all know we're all we're no, we're just, but it felt like this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And it's funny because, again, they did such a good job of constructing these challenges, like how funny the bird thing is, because it's hilarious to have somebody like, what does it sound like? Like, you know like it's just it's 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 like um it's a it's a comedic sketch you you cannot not have it be funny whoever has to do that whoever has to say it on tv like who, all those personalities it's like almost guaranteed a laugh it's so brilliant the funeral thing had been brought about by the most crazy like chalice poison thing and then it had also brought about like Oh no, not Econ. There's Econ Sue. Like there were so many things that the it was wait, monumental. Wait, wait. No, say that again. Econ What's Sue? her name? No, I don't understand. What is no. her name? No, I'm glad we're talking about it. Is Ekin it English? Ekin. Ekin Sue. Uh, okay. okay. I mean okay. the famous line of a "Sweet Baby Jesus," not Ekin Sue or something like that. Like you... you're all saying their names <laughs> wrong. You know, like I look poverty. I mean, look at listen. I, I it's so funny because obviously poverty? Kevin can't say Kevin cannot say poverty can't say it you know like but he's so dumb that he can't even make it funny now phaedra can say poverty <laughs> but she wants to call her poverty now i also want her to call her poverty and i also want her to like you know like no i want her to thank god i want her to show us how many headbands she brought like and what the suitcase was oh that held gosh. the headbands oh. anyone who can't say her name did not watch harry potter because mm. there is a character from harry potter called poverty and so you just know that poverty and it means like daughter of the mountain or something in hindi so it's very interesting i had to look it up because i was like you don't look indian yet you have an indian name and then um found out that she was raised on some like cult commune uh that was based in hinduism in the u.s and so her name is poverty because her parents were like well you know white people trying on someone else's culture and religion there we go. This is why she's named Par the T. You sounded like Phaedra when I loved Phaedra's rant when she was like, don't play with the housewives, Parvati. You know, when she said that. <laughs> Iconic. Every syllable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did y'all know much about Phaedra before coming into the season? Because Shelby and I were big Real Houses of Atlanta fans. We grew up watching Phaedra on TV. Like, what did y'all know about her? I know Donkey Booty, and I thought that was so stupid when, when it happened, because I watched season one of Atlanta. Uh, and then what I do know, and this is what I was telling Chris like a couple weeks ago, is that I have a hard time with Phaedra because, and I think I'm going to give her grace, but I have a hard time with Phaedra because there's this scene that is like viral from one of the reunions of Housewife where she's like, and you got your sperm from a sperm bank where you don't even know if there's a serial killer or rapist. And like... <laughs> That bothered me because I went through IVF, I went through the donation process, the donor mm. process, and like it's just so tone deaf to all the women in the world who don't have who don't settle for some ancient ass Negro, um, and just to say that you have a husband, mm -hmm. um, and so for you to say that to someone on national TV talking about mm. sperm banks was just like un really uncouth, and I know for maybe for the time. Like, I mean, maybe she's a better person now or whatever. So I think seeing her on the show kind of redeemed her to me. But I also didn't like the way she played the game because I thought mm. Kate was absolutely correct with saying, like, Phaedra, step the fuck up. Like, mm. actually, don't just defend yourself when you need to defend yourself, but actually play the game. But she was just hungry the whole time. It was like Phaedra was either chewing on something or looking sideways at somebody else. I mean, like, Boiled eggs? It ain't boiled eggs. eggs. It, ain't, it ain't boiled eggs. Like, I mean, her first couple of episodes as a trader, like, you could tell she was like, oh, no, that person didn't come in. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Burgalicious. Like, you could tell. And then as, like, the last five episodes, bitch was just like. <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> Wow, this game is hard. I'm like, can we? Can you try to do something? Rich? Anyways, never scared. Oh, never scared. Up. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> Ever.
so comfortable. She got real and the, comfortable. And the eye twitch, apparently, from Kevin. <laughs> God, Kevin. <laughs> that so idiot. Funny. Yeah, Phaedra, she definitely has a complicated history on the Housewives, right? She was kind of booted from the series because of br- rumors about Candy Burris and her family. Oh, yeah. She yeah. accused Candy of, like, like attacking, like, sex a- a- SA. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that she's she was a crazy person. But wait, I have a question. I mm-hmm. I thought they said that she's from Married to Medicine. Is she, did she move over to Married to Medicine? Yes. yes. Smart. So... Mm-hmm. Phaedra uh, just moved to a new Bravo show. Yeah, she's rebranding. So now she's on Married to Medicine, which is like another Bravo show that our mom like loves and watches. And it's like all these doctors based in Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. We don't personally watch it, but I've, I've seen some episodes. Yeah. Oh, wait, so she's married to a doctor now? Now that not that jailbird Apollo? No, she just lives in a can't. No, you're right, she's... Chris. She's not married to a doctor. Yeah. Uh, she's just on the show now. Yeah, it could have been some her. reason. <laughs> I have watched seasons of Atlanta, not every season, so I know Phaedra, and I knew I know all of like the major mm-hmm. drama, and I know you know exactly who Apollo is, and I know that viral moment, and she's saying it while Apollo's sitting next to her, and we know what happens. So it's just like, you know, she is exactly who she is. She's also the one who pretended to not be pregnant as early as she was and so she was trying to like get the baby out of her at eight months that was her yeah, right i forgot about that I, yeah. yes yeah. she was trying to hide her pregnancy so it didn't look like she you know had sex like before marriage, before marriage. I think. <laughs> yeah oh yeah she's like i'm trying to get this baby out of me and sheree's like wait a minute um <laughs> yeah that's not possible the baby's like no no it's it's the fully formed lungs and fully formed heart that baby this baby <laughs> coming up out of me <laughs> like said, she is a crazy person no it's true phaedra's so complicated and i do think to your point wa that on this show she does redeem herself a bit like i feel like mm-hmm. she was clearly the standout the one that has gotten the most positive response on social media like i was so entertained by the season for a lot of reasons but mainly because of phaedra and her mm-hmm. iconic mm-hmm. lines mm-hmm. <laughs> she just, mm-hmm drop so many good ones my personal fave is when peter is coming for her at the round table and she's like i am not on the bachelor so i don't have to kiss your ass for rose just yeah (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. so good she just read people like crazy they could not argue with her yeah Mm -hmm. no she read them down i also Love we talked about it. Sweet Baby Jesus, not Ekin Sue, is actually so iconic. Like, we just have to say it one more time. So that's my personal favorite. I know, why wow, you had a, a quote that you also love. Oh, yeah. So another favorite quote that she said was, uh, I do too much because you do too little, Dan. So good. And, like, I was like, yeah, they were just like, he's like, yeah, it's just too much. And I was like, uh-uh. Mm-mm, don't say she does too much. Now she does. The she fur... Does. It was a lot. Her outfits. <laughs> her outfits were, it was crazy. It's not a line, but but her, sorry, but her just getting Dan out when he came for her. Like. Iconic. I just, it's so, it's like a, it's like a, it makes me so happy. He's such an asshole and he didn't deserve to be there and he didn't do a good job of his thing. No. And, she, and he came for her. Oh yeah. So viciously oh. and so like, like aggressively and, and because again, I also feel like he underestimated her so for her to mm-hmm. so ruthlessly and i mean with with brevity take him down and just have the weight of everyone on, on her side was just like it felt so good for my soul i was like <sighs> because also could you imagine if she yes yeah. all, could you imagine at that moment if she went out halfway in the middle season and then we just had the rest of the season with dan oh yeah awful yeah think about it what would that have even been trishelle Ugh, even worse Ugh. yeah chris like i definitely agree i agree with you that he didn't know who she was enough to understand that this was going to backfire on him also like his why po- why po- why not poverty uh, mm-hmm. is it because he knew poverty like why not no, he her? says that at the tell-all um, he that- says that because that because he, he would have to get out he he made it seem like he would have to get her out anyway so if he do it now or do it then 
you know, if we do it now that it's, yeah, he swung, have... he said he swings big or he makes big moves or whatever. And that's yeah. usually what paid off. But I, I was just thinking to myself, why did you have to throw anybody under the bus from the traders at all? Thank you. Thank you, God. Why did you have to throw anybody from the traders out at all so early on? And it's because mm-hmm. you weren't playing your game correctly. He, to me, like was one of the first people to make like a huge issue, like a mistake, but it, he even did it before that because Parvati said, no, we need to get rid of someone else besides Bergy. It's not mm-hmm. Bergy. It's not Bergy. And they acquiesced to him. And I did not know why. She was right. And I was just like, this is the dumbest thing. I'm so mad. I'm so mad that they, that Phaedra doesn't know what's going on, on enough to fight. Mm-hmm. And Parvati didn't really stand by her guns and say, no, Peter set us both up. Obviously, Dan. Peter set us up. We have to choose someone else to not fall into this trap head fucking first. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just showed that was, moment was so microcosmic of the real world. This was definitely one of my least favorite moments. Dan bulldozing both of the women who are like, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Don't do it. And the man just being like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> but I, I mean, they to. let him, they, they I let know. him to a certain extent. Like we can say they that did. he did that, but they, they, they went back on their heels. They should have just threw him under the bus. Like they, yeah. but once that backfired, they should have mm-hmm. went to that round table and both been like, we got to get Dan out. Dan <laughs> Like, <laughs> out. I would have, I would have kicked him out. Like, don't listen. If I'm, if I am in the mafia with you and you make a stupid mistake, oh, such a liability. The next morning, I'm waking up and killing you. I'm getting everybody to kill you because you can no longer be on my team because you don't know how to behave. You gotta go. You're only as strong as your weakest. I fully agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dan was such a weak link. He Mm -hmm. did it all to himself. Like Mm -hmm. he really played himself. Yeah, I was so happy when he went home. And I know that I think Chris, you said that you watch Big Brother. I have friends who are watching traders and who really love Big Brother. And we're so excited to see Dan on the show because apparently he's like this big brother icon. And he looked really bad on Traders. Like, he did such a bad job. So, yeah. and I've heard that he's this legend. So I was really unimpressed. Mm-hmm. It it feels like for, like, very early on, they're like, Dan, you're very suspicious. You barely see anything. And he's like, okay, cool. So I'll just continue not saying anything for four more episodes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm like, do something. Like, Maybe he, maybe that's okay. Take maybe it was like, I can't do anything. Cause if I do something, if I swing, I'm going to miss unless I swing and I don't miss, which is then for someone for on my, on my team. And that's why in his mind, he's like, I'm either going to, he's better friends with poverty or whatever. And he really, the reunion was like, it's, it was either Phaedra or me. Like he could not see a way in which they would win together, which I didn't real, I didn't quite understand why he was so aggressively like no world, no world. Like whether, and, and having said that, it could be because I had not watched season one. So I didn't quite understand how the gameplay would change where you would need your numbers. And I think Sandra is someone who early on realized that it's not about mm-hmm. faithfuls versus traitors, which I think that I thought it was mm-hmm. more about like, yeah, it's just us versus them. And then we just got to get them out before they kill us. So easy. But no, it's like, it's not interesting. Have their That's individual... the voice in Chris's head. <laughs> it's a weird voice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they have their individual clicks which is basically their networks or the style mm-hmm. of show they're on and then they have to like actually get out as many faithfuls as possible just to get their numbers down and then from there they can like kill off the people like i don't also consider even till the very end that people were going to split thanks god the pot and therefore we'd want as little people as possible to get as much money as possible i was like oh Mm. yeah sorry mj like very early when i realized i was like oh crazy kill yourself mj you're not for you no this is not it honey you're not this is not the sunset you'll be sean you know what i'm saying like just wash her face as she realized she was mad i thought it was so wild to see the grudges that were held at the reunion because also season one there were also some grudges but it felt like the housewives both phaedra and mj the bravo liberties were not over it you know phaedra was still mad at dan she was like yeah i hate him and mj was like yeah pos no pos did not stutter I would have been mm-hmm. mad too. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, and well, now MJ, I'm like, girl, you're already rich. Why do you care about this hundred thousand dollars? But like, 
Phaedra, I would have been mad at Dan. Dan fucked up her game for no reason. Mm -hmm. I get why she was annoyed with him because she could have possibly gone all the way if Mm -hmm. he had not set that seed of dissent, of Mm -hmm. doubt. Larsa Pippen was on the show. Remember that? I'll tell you my favorite line. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I actually forgot something to this very moment. My favorite line of the entire season is Sandra during the funeral episode where they have to like go to the gravesite and they're answering individual questions along the way and the question is something like two of you are born the same year or something like that and they all then have to like figure out a how who the answer and they have to give their ages to figure it out okay sandra and larsa the same age Sandra then goes to a confessor who's like, I can't believe I'm the same age as Larsa. I would have thought that she was at least 20 years older than me. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> to Larsa's face, not Giving really. Giving the Lulu. How come we didn't talk about that at the tell-all? I'm like, can we, I'm sorry, can we, can we roll back and watch Larsa react to that comment from Sandra? I just want to, that'd be my, that's what I care about. I don't care about her dumb relationship with Michael Jordan's son. Don't care. You know what I'm saying? Could care less. <laughs> but play this reaction right now. I want to watch it. Yeah, that was so wild. I mean, the casting this season was just so bizarre. The fact that Marcus and Larsa were on the season together was just so wild. But I will say, Great, Marcus me. was really good. Marcus was surprisingly good at the game. Mm-hmm. He looks nothing like his father. I mean, mm-hmm. that boy looked like his mama. I, like, you know, it's kind of like, the, it's, it's honestly the way, whenever I see somebody and they look nothing like their parent, that's like AD from Love is Blind, I'm like, oh, bitch, you look like your daddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing like your mom. You don't look like Jackie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I said, I don't see not a Jordan in that blood. Whose child is this? Maury? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's the father? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's just so crazy. But Larsa Pippen was wild. Like, and then their their whole like, how are you guys doing? Well, we weren't doing well. We had to like work through our problems. I was like, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about you. I mean, I don't care. That is first personally me. I don't care. Um, Neither does my. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hard, you know, <laughs> we do not care. What did y'all think about the the poison chalice thing? This was a new. Um, thing from for season two that didn't happen season one and that was wild poverty walking around in her headband with the cup like that was wild i loved it me too me too i loved it so much like the, she was so happy to do it and like it, it was weird because she had to get the she had to find the chalice and then dan went in there and did nothing for whatever but then she really took the reins and i love <laughs> the fact that at what point did they tell all the like phaedra you did nothing like should you have done the chalice and poverty was like no i totally that was my thing you see me i killed it i literally killed it <laughs> yeah but like what she was right though like they're all drinking from these beautiful like bejeweled glass like but their glasses normal yummy like can see through it can see what i'm drinking like tastes like nothing because it's glass like with the kucha mots on the outside and then give her like a rusty steely you know like tetanus shot <laughs> inducing <laughs> coal you know like chalice that like she has to be like you know i want to drink out of this it sounds like it looks like snow white's you know like weird witch trying to like poison you you know like no i'm I, in a billion years look at me i'd be like no 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 ma'am sweet baby i can sue was like well i'm british we like to drink so <laughs> somebody handed me a dirty chalice and i was like bottoms up mate <laughs> 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 yep and she's fucking peter <laughs> wait we talk about that she's fucking peter and yeah yes mm-hmm. good for her i mean to me he doesn't give the vibes i mean i know he gave it all he gave it all in his, his episode and i was like okay good for you but i just need like to me ct is more my like i need a strapping man with a barrel chest john. Uh, as chris would say john um and <laughs> <laughs> John, I Fergus. I love a redhead. I love a redhead. <laughs> they had like Fergus. It was just so stupid. Fergus was just like one eye with like a drooling so outside funny. one of the mouth, like pulling a bell. Yes, Alan. Can I help you? <laughs> or I sorry. Yes, Alan. I am here to help you. <laughs> 
So Go good. Do you guys, do y'all have a good uh, Alan accent? The traitors. Oh. So, are you a faithful or are you a traitor? You know, this sounds almost Spanish. A little too much R. It was a little too much R. It was, it was, it was Latin. This girl, like, this girl went to... <laughs> what, what the, what, honey, girl I went, went to, to all Edinburgh. South America and then back. She went to Edinburgh in 2022, Later. came back they... calling me babes. And she's now can't do this accent? That is crazy. Are you a faithful or are you a traitor? That's better. But yeah, that was still, still but talk. Antigo it's Montana, over. you stole my baby, or whatever that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> my name is in it was a little, it sounded a little Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bye. My name is Inigo Mentoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I don't know what you said. I can't wait to hear it again, though. Can we quickly go around this? My question to you: Who would you not kick out of bed? Not kick out of your Scottish Highlander bed? Like if one of these cast members came into your um, beautiful Scottish, you know, like CT. in sweet, yeah, of course, CT. Now, if you can't say CT and you can't say John, because obviously John's an obvious answer. Go ahead, moi. Can't say CT. There were, there were no CT. other men. There were there were men. Okay, besides CT. <laughs> I, CT's like a lovable teddy bear. I love him. And and John's off the table, of course. Mm -hmm. I, okay, if we're taking personality out of it, I do think Kevin is very attractive. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah, he yeah, is not him. smart. Mm -hmm. But that's, mm -hmm. but that's not important for this question. Mm -mm. Not, 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 almost, almost better if he's not smart. Bergy. <laughs> I want Burgalicious. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch Love Island USA, but apparently... Bergy is with a black girl he met on Love Island USA, which shocked me. Oh. I know. I did not. <laughs> redheads, they love a okay. black woman. Let me tell you right now. These redheads, they love a black woman. Mm. Did not see it coming, but I'm here for it. Hey, Bergy. Uh, no and... Peter? No Peter fans out here? No. I, 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 would, I would say Max. I would say Max. Oh, Chris, that's mm. good. I would say Max, too. Yeah. I'm like He's the so answer. hot. Yeah. I don't know him. I know you don't. I don't know that man. <laughs> um, I would him. also either pick Marcus Jordan. He was cute. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's cute. Yeah. yeah, he's cute. Yeah, you're right. So basically everyone but Pilot Pete. <laughs> or Deontay. And no Johnny Bananas. Or... Oh yeah, no, no Johnny, Johnny Bananas. Bananas. No. no. Maybe Deontay is, is sensitive. You know, mm -hmm. sweets. Yeah, I just yeah. don't have the energy for somebody with like a cry, emotional trauma. trauma. Yeah. 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 If he can't handle the traitors, it's like, whoo. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's Wait, what can't you handle, my, my yeah, friend? You... <laughs> this is literally fake. Yeah. <gasps> oh, another question: <laughs> If would y'all rather be a traitor or a faithful? And if you're a traitor, who would you kill first? Who's getting out of the castle? Traitor. N number one um but who would i kill from the from that cast that was there okay let's see i would have killed um trish shell same those mm -hmm. gloves every glove every loose fitting pant she wore every outfit was just terrible i mean it's just like girl <laughs> you don't you don't have any taste you gotta go i'm gonna say this if the game stays how it is i'd want to be faithful i think the traders need one more person or they have you know i just mm. i felt like there weren't enough and like they were just on islands because especially i mean i'm not quite i don't feel like it'd be very hard to win for the traders any of them this season the way it was and i get poverty saying this that it's like hard to like be accused of something and then have to immediately be like, oh absolutely not but you know who really is a fucking shit show john you know you're just like it's like you really have to be <laughs> you really have to be 100 percent okay with being basically a psychopath which I think mm -hmm. would have an emotional, I would be emotionally damaged by that because I really want people to like me. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I have, you know, I think that I've been too ingrained to want like attention and love where I would just, I would think I would have like a menti B. A menti, I'm sorry, mental breakdown. Oh, I was like MTV. <laughs> I know. Menti, menti B. Menti B. A mental breakdown. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be a faithful too. I'd want to be a traitor. Because I feel like if you do it right, that's like the best way to win. But mm -hmm. it just seems really hard. And maybe this mm -hmm. year the traders were just struggling. But you have to have that balance of strategy and also getting along with people. And it's like none of them did it right. 
Dan wasn't thinking about either. Parvati was almost like two strategy. Phaedra was like two on the relationships, wasn't thinking strategy. Like no one was that great. Like getting, trying to get Peter was dumb. Like, you know, like they should have gotten someone else that wouldn't say no to you. He, they, tr- he tried to trap you. He hates you. It's not an ultimatum. He can say no. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, get, listen, if Phaedra was like blinking her eyes at CT the entire time, CT is beasting out on, you know, like comps and doesn't really have like that much skin in the game. I would have gotten CT to be a traitor in a heartbeat. Mm. Sandra. Sandra. I think Sandra, oh, she so said good. it too, that she was she was the right person wanted, to like choose it. Nobody it. chose her. And I was like, yeah, you should have cho- chosen somebody who just could be remain even keeled because really all the, the way that the you, all you have to do. This is what I, this is my strategy. You go in, you find a click, you stick with that click. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, wait, should we do that? Like, let's put up this person. This person looks sketchy. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So everything is, I don't know in the beginning. And we, I don't know. I want to get to the end though. And like, oh, I honor you faithful. And then halfway through, once you get down to like the last couple of people, then that's when it gets a little bit hard for sure. You do have to kind of throw somebody under the bus at the end, especially if you don't have all strong trader players. Um mm-hmm. And I don't think that this was a good group of strong trader players. Like, no, Parvati doesn't have any real social skills, and she like always is like, "Hey, I wouldn't have trusted her." <laughs> it was at so awkward. All. <laughs> it was so awkward, right? So, um, but and then Kate was so bad at it. She was just like the whole time was just like <laughs> bad, bad at it. She ended up getting herself out because oh, this is where she fucked up. So when mm-hmm. they were all like, "Do you think all the traders are done?" She was she put green, and I was like, "Bitch, now you know that everybody else doesn't think that. You have yep. to know that." But you that thought, "Oh, I'm done." <laughs> I yes, made let's it. End the game. <laughs> I made it. Let's end the game. Like no, put that red in. And so that's where she messed up because then maybe they would have chosen MJ. Mm-hmm. And then she could have been there longer. Now, the fact is, is that two friends made it to the end. And that's where the issue where they're in lies. So they mm-hmm. didn't break up the friendships once they figured. I mean, they knew CT and Tricell were, were friends. And Tricell was so annoying the entire time, like crying for needing a shield, <sighs> being worried about not being like they could have easily just got her out. Yeah, I don't know um, how she made it to the end without being murdered. Yeah, they just let her do it. And, and I was like, why? Her and Mm -hmm. Peter needed to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. I I feel like so many times when the traders were discussing who to send out, Trishel's name came up, but somehow they always pick someone else. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know why. It's like, you got to get rid of those strong players. You you need the MJs and the Sherays and the Phaedras (laughs) and the, you need the dummies to stick around because Mm -hmm. they don't know what's going on. Yeah. And also poverty's like face they made fun of, uh, which is she doesn't for some reason realize that she pouts and like she gives like this kind of like glasses. She needs glasses. Okay, yeah. She's just like thinking and pouting and like pursing her lips and like squinting her eyes all the time. She's like Renelle's Renee Zilwiger on top and like like a <laughs> I don't know, like Kylie Jenner on the bottom. It's just like you know. Anyway, I love her. I actually really liked her. I feel and because I really feel like she did the chalice thing well. She like and she had such gumption for it. Mm-hmm. I would have been scared out of my mind. She kept trying. You know? She was a better traitor than Dan, in my opinion. But sure. I think mm-hmm. it's weird because she was on Survivor and Survivor you have to have a social game, but it just the traitors, she struggled. She was not able to make friends and connections. Not and that killed her. Mm-hmm. Totally. And another big mistake the Parvati made. So there were some, multiple times this season where they had to recruit new traders, right? Like Parvati convinced Phaedra, we got to recruit Peter. Mm-hmm. And then in the end, Phaedra also recruited Kate, which I think both of those were the wrong decisions. Like who would y'all have recruited as a trader? Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oops. Yeah. Yeah. CT. Or CT. CT, Sandra. I mean, if you're going to keep around Trishelle and she's so vocal, I mean, but it, it's like <laughs> Peter was so obviously a faithful and he, why would he turn mm-hmm. against the, his friends? It was like, it's already hard to be a traitor and lie to people. So why they thought they would go for the mo- for the person that had even more blood on their hands to do that was the dumbest move. They should have got like, that's why mm-hmm. Sandra maybe was more on the radar. Kate's definitely under the radar because she came in late in the game. You needed someone 
who would not be, who didn't, who'd be not afraid to have blood on their hands. Uh, you're right. Now I that love, you both I say CT, him. I think mm-hmm. that's a good one because they needed him in the game to win challenges. So I don't think people mm-hmm. would have been coming for him. Like, I think they would have been able to make it to the end. The, the couple, Phaedra and CT. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, also, I'm curious, the escape room episode, they had something similar in season one with all the mice Ugh. and the rats and the maggots and stuff. That was Not so gross. Mm-hmm. I kept looking, um, I would pause and look and be like, they're removing, right? I could not believe it to be real. Like, I would literally pause and be like, are things moving on these? Like, I would be like, I have to know if they're if they're like fake or real, and so they looked real, and I would absolutely never do it. I'd be out. I hated Trishel's dress at the reunion. <laughs> Did she what think that she... she was on Hunger Games? <laughs> Did she think that she was uh, like she was one of the citizens of w- Section One or whatever it's called? Like, what? I don't understand what that fucking confection was and who put her in it and why she agreed. Who's it shows stylist? like the non gamers did not know how to play like the fashion game because mm-hmm. I feel like none of them, you know, looked that great throughout this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Also, I was really shocked at Peppermint's like balloon outfit. Like that, that the color was beautiful, but like, girl, <laughs> mama, red, I'm reading you. I'm not saying all the words that need to be said, but for filth, ma'am, this is a bad outfit. How would that look on the runway? Though? I like yes. the reunion look. No. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> she had that big puffy like teal outfit on. I think no it was shape. too big. It was like no body. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It needed no to body. fit her better. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But I I I it made me she what she said on the reunion made me very sad. I wish she had had more time and for the reasons yeah. why she should have. Yeah. And I mean, I would have loved to watch her like compete. You know, like could you imagine Peppermint in the, in the escape room? <laughs> oh, tap out immediately! Like all the housewives. Sorry, we're, we've got to go. <laughs> yeah, like Pepper, I want to see Peppermint like run challenges though too. Like you know, like I think that Peppermint mm-hmm. would have excelled, and I think that yeah, I don't know. Trisha and CT have thinking. known each other for twenty years. They took for granted, I think, some of those relationships, and everyone was thinking about the Bravo relationships because that was so obvious. But it's like, wait, you have two people that were on a show and have known each other for twenty years, and mm-hmm. somehow that mm-hmm. fell under the radar of the entire season. Yeah. So I guess that's good gameplay. Good for props to them. They like made it through. Yeah. I think everything about them was manufactured. I think they planned the entire thing. I think that her wanting to have a reason to not trust him about like the fire thing was something. And I think a hundred percent that they went into the finale being like, how do we have the less blood on our hands as possible and make it just the final two? And I lo- like, mm. I don't think there was a chance in hell that Trishelle would actually go home with MJ. I somehow think that they manufactured the ending to know, not, not production, ct and trichelle i have to say the ending really shocked me Mm. like the fact that trichelle and ct really like you said coordinated produced manufactured this ending it was horrible and the gag on mj's face i felt so bad for her Mm -hmm. i was i was upset because trichelle is the villain of the season like i i cannot root for her her wardrobe was the villain of the season. Um, <laughs> the berets, honey, you're not and the berets. Ugh, <laughs> give me a the head. Are so fast. Yeah, these single gloves. Like she just kept wearing gloves, and I was like, "Ma'am, yeah. who told Too you that this was a, like that? Like, you needed to have a glove with. She had a driving glove, a half driving glove. She had a half like studded leather glove, and she had like a blue glove and a red glove. And I was like, "Girl, who is doing this to you?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Who is assaulting you with their fashion choices? Right? And to see her win at the end, I was like, this feels so incorrect. It mm-hmm. feels so I incorrect. Mm-hmm. It's Kate's fault. <laughs> but that's just no, my mind. I, I agree. I'm like, why did Kate not murder Trishel at the end instead of Sheree? Like, it didn't make sense to me. Just go to the end with your Bravo girls and hope they trust you. You know? Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. absolutely right because now we realize how important numbers are. You're like, you fucked yourself over. You shot, you, you 
that was your number. You just like turn around, like you know, you're like in, on the same team. You're like, oh, good, I'll I'll take the shot right in your face. Good. You're just like, oh, <laughs> oh you dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And the way the season went, it felt like someone from Bravo should win. So the fact that it ended up being CT and Trishelle just <laughs> felt like dang. The second Phaedra got out, the Bravo girls were done. They couldn't fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, MJ was like. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god are you guys are you guys she, gonna and then she's like girl I couldn't because then we would have still made again and I would have been like and bitch and <laughs> producers would have called it at some point like that's crazy that they were like we still think that there is a traitor they didn't think there was no damn traitor no they uh-huh. didn't think there was no damn traitor they did not think MJ was a traitor at all they were that's just insane. like Hmm, split it three ways or two Literally. ways. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> that was so dumb. Mm-hmm. And CT was like, I can't, I can only trust Trishel. And then Trishel was like, well, I thought CT was a traitor. And I was like, that was actually insane when she mm-hmm. voted for CT. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Don't believe it, Laura. I think she didn't want MJ to hate her. So she, so she knew that they would vote again if it, if it was obviously a three way tie, which it was. And then if she didn't vote if she had voted for ct saw his face and all he and he did a great job of looking absolutely shocked that she that she had voted for him mm-hmm. he was like <gasps> we'll say this mj looked gorgeous in the finale that glam mm-hmm. was glamming mm-hmm, it was she brought it mm-hmm. so who or what from trader season two did y'all love to hate um i love to hate john mm. That's good. Yeah. For John, I feel like he got he, a little cocky, or I don't know. It just felt like he was talking so much. And at the reunion, <laughs> when he was defending Trishel and CT, uh. I was like, ugh. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was, too, he embraced the Peter Pals and that alliance almost too much and was kind of like a talking head for me. Whereas in the beginning, he was kind of like, oh, you know, I have asthma and I not best for this game but he kind of changed and turned a bit so i agree he was a little annoying yeah he had some good one-liners the duchess of deception and Mm -hmm. all of that (laughs) yeah he did (laughs) (laughs) i'll also say i have ct for love to hate because you know he was a lovable teddy bear he was you know the last dude standing i liked Mm -hmm. how he was literally carrying the team on his back um i love the challenge where they had to hop on the on the wooden um blocks no one could do it (laughs) jesus christ the whole time i was like what the fuck is wrong with everyone and like here's the truth i don't know that i would have done it but the way that and maybe it's just phaedra and mj's little legs that they just couldn't do it but I would have given it a little bit more gusto than that. You have like you get to go and take a good shower and have a full glam squad fix everything. So like, don't act like you can't mess your hair up. Get you a swimmer's Crazy. cap, girl. <laughs> the only oh. way you do that is if you start running and you don't stop. Like you just have. It's like, it's like the only. Way, it's like because you mm-hmm. just have to use your momentum to get from like one to another. And I think that, but I also do think like having long legs might help, you know, like I can't imagine a world in which yeah. MJ is like totally fine just to like book it off of the co- uh, coast and then get around. I mean, her little, like, you know, she looks, the minute she looks down and like stops, she's not gonna make it. She's gonna fall off. You know? Yeah. I mean, but they have also had more facial work than me. And so maybe they're just like really worried about hitting and busting something. Mm. So that's, yeah. that's a, that's something to keep in consideration too. And also Trishel hasn't had enough work done. And so she wasn't that worried about it. It's like they, none of them played Nintendo growing up. None of them understood that with Mario and the tail, you got to just get a bump. Bum, 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 <laughs> bum, and just like and you're not gonna make it no sonic nothing they didn't play any of those old ass games that which i just aged myself and that is fucking fine <laughs> we love those games we do yes <laughs> and, yeah what do you think of this little flirtatious relationship with ct and phaedra what was going on nothing Okay, I, I think it was fun. Like, I think Phaedra just thought he was cute and wanted to have like a good time and be entertained. I don't tell you I did a deep dive because I was like, 
from my last mm-hmm. knowledge of CT's like pop culture in the Zeitgeist, I thought he was married. And I did a deep dive and he was married. He married a nice Cuban lady and they had an MTV wedding. Shit has gone oh. down since. Not good shit. And she, honey, like moved out. They're getting a divorce. But then he went on, he deleted it, but he had an Instagram post he put up where he basically was like, she was leading a double life and me and my son were her secret life. And just so you know, when I first started dating her, I realized that I was the other man and that she was in fact married. And now I hear that she's dating a man that works at Magic Mike. Now, I, is CT like an Irish man from Boston or an English, like a Peaky Blinder? Like what is he, what is his makeup? No. He so is like he would, yeah, be from the Boston yard. Ah, he's from Boston saying the N word. <laughs> yep. Wicked hot. Him and Mark Wahlberg yes. just, cu- yes. just beating up black boys left and right. <laughs> can't um, I mean, CT is the enemy, but there's something very attractive about him. I mean, I did you see him, his legs and those leggings? Did y'all see that? <laughs> he he's, he he's looked much great. He now. carried the team. Yeah. And not us all about to look him up. Like, hmm, what's CT up to? Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you what he's doing. He's a stay at home dad making his sweat, sweatbands. I can't remember. Come on, girls, just say it. It's sweat headbands. You sweat can headbands. do it. <laughs> Thank sweat you. There we go. Got it. Well, it sounds like CT could use the money, so good for him. <laughs> Get his business, sweatband business, off the off the ground. You know. Oh my gosh! Uh, for love to hate, I'll just throw in the Bravo ladies. I I I feel like they were doing better than I initially thought, and they had the numbers, but they struggled with strategy at the end. I'm like, y'all, there's no way it should have been Trishel and CT. You had the you had the numbers. Like you had more right. people. Like, let's do the math. Let's get to the end. Let's win. And so I feel like they fumbled it. Big time. Totally. Yeah. No, no, I think you're right. So for hate to hate, we talked to you know we talked about Dan. <laughs> Dan truly was Dan and Trishel. We'll just put them together. The oh. villains of the season. Dan was a horrible traitor, and he sabotaged Phaedra's game. No one was onto her. I feel like she could have won. Dan blew it. No, yeah. And- Dan hate to hate. Yeah, the worst. And then Trishel came after Peppermint and Phaedra. If if Trishel wasn't there, Phaedra would have won too. Because Trishel mm-hmm. was the was the one who convinced everyone mm-hmm. to be like Phaedra, Phaedra. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hate to hate Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> have y'all watched Bling Empire? Like, did you know him? Mm-mm. I maybe watched one episode of a, of it, and I was like, I don't care. I can't. We have seen Bling Empire. I think I've seen all the seasons mm-hmm. and including Bling Empire New York. This which is, is better. You know, which is better. And Kevin, Kevin is a clown on Traders and a clown on Bling Empire, like perfectly represented on the show. And one of the most iconic things about Kevin, I have to tell this. It's so funny. So like on Bling laughing. Empire, he, he's adopted, um, you know, born and raised in like this white family uh, in the Midwest. And then he uh, moves to LA to become an actor and a model and stuff. And his white dad like owned a car dealership. And Kevin has never owned a car. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna buy my first car for my dad's dealership. You know, kind of full circle moment. And he buys a Tesla. He buys a Tesla with his own money from his dad. Like he's so proud. And guys, like he gets into that. No, he I'm like drives off the lot. And five minutes later, black screen, <laughs> car crash. To Tesla is in crazy. Oh my and you God. see Kevin in the confessional being like, I crashed my dad's car, my first car. And now what Kevin's an... carless again. What an idiot. Wait, so is it bling is it bling empire just crazy rich Asians? And so because yes. but like then he doesn't count I mean I get it, I get it. But the crazy rich doesn't come from Asia, right? The crazy He's rich like comes the normal from normal person Caucasian. on the show. Yes. Yeah. Kevin's oh. like the straight man and all yes. of his friends like are the super are the rich, rich ones. ones. He's like this Midwest boy mm-hmm. moving to LA and all his friends are like million billionaires. Yeah. Okay. He's the Penn okay. Badgley of Gossip Girl where he's the poor <laughs> yes. one ding, ding, ding. <laughs> who lives in like yes. Oh, there's a brick Brooklyn 
brownstone. So poor. Meanwhile, it's one point yeah, two million. Poor. Shut up. Poor. <laughs> poor. <laughs> yeah, it's right. it's like now I'm watching The Good Wife, and when her husband goes to prison, they they are now poor and no longer live in the suburbs. They have to move to a downtown high rise doorman three bedroom apartment and she has to go back to work as a lawyer in a high rise well to do but she's poor. Oh, poor thing. You're gonna help her and <laughs> help her get some more money to help with her kids. I'm like, oh my God. I agree. I hate to hate Kevin and the car crash stories all you need oh to know God. about him. Yes. That's, mm-hmm. that's it. That's that's great. <laughs> I feel like I'll also throw in the challenges for hate to hate. They were a little too physical and gross. And maybe it's because the real housewives were just incapable of doing it, doing anything, but it felt like maybe there needed to be more like mental challenges or more like the bird call. So it wasn't them <laughs> having to like run up a hill, carry heavy stuff. Like it just seemed very like physical that mm-hmm. they made would've... it for CP to succeed and the rest of them to just struggle. They would have done bad anyways, <laughs> girl. It doesn't matter. Fact. It doesn't matter. They are skillless individuals. Yes, you're not. I know. Maybe they I had a drink scared. throwing competition. Oh, or yes. Like a re- what if they did a reading challenge? Table, table reading flipping. Yes. yes. Yeah, a reading Make challenge. Yes. yes. The thing about it is Ooh, like, yes, they have fashion. Fashion. I- Style Make out an outfit. She by Sheree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's coming out this fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finally. Uh, life, life, life wear. Uh, lifestyle, lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's coming out. Oh, fall, sp- spring, summer. Spring, summer. Yes. She by Sheree. What are like some more Highlandy things? Like they're on horse. Like what do they do in those? Besides fucking, what do they do in those Outlander shit things? Like go to war. They fuck. Um, they, they milk do? cows. Uh, they milk oh, okay. cows. Um, they oh, yeah, darn Scottish, socks. Okay, what, what is oh, like, um, oh they knit. They, they didn't, dye. Like, we should have we done more. Like yeah, they, like, they use their urine to set the dye. I'm sorry. Come, come again. <laughs> come. No, I won't. Thank you. No, come again. <laughs> come again. I mean, tell me the thing again. No, no, no. So they, um, they, uh, this is not current day Scotland, but, uh, in Outlander at some point, she's like helping the, the ladies of the town, uh, dye wool and they use a dye, but then in order to set the dye, they, they steep it in, in urine. So the, all the women's pee in a pot and then they're all like singing a song, like in the Gaelic and they're just like with the, with the uh, material and urine. No, thank you. Huh. Okay. Wow. No, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> the housewives will love that challenge. Yeah, you're welcome. Perfect for them. <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all love to love this season? Um, I loved love to love Phaedra. Yeah. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. Without her. Yeah. I'm saying. I totally Phaedra. Agree. I sorry, I loved her Go eyeshadows. Ahead. Obviously, she would do a lot of like shimmer here, but then also she would get this. Let's talk about it. It was like a turquoise. No, it mm-hmm. was like a green, yes, metallic an eyeliner, metallic mm-hmm. green eyeliner that she would put obviously in her like below her line, and it was very vibrantly hued, like the pig, whatever product it is, honey. I don't know. Is it Urban Decay? I don't know. What, urban, like, it's like, urban Decay. Yeah, I thought it was Urban Decay too. I thought so too. And then she would have they would. They had the bangs would be like just right here in the eyelashes, just like, <laughs> yeah, perfect. And she's like, <laughs> with her boiled eggs. Leg. <laughs> oh, sweet baby Jesus, not egg and sue. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the eggs? <laughs> love to love. I think we have the same love to love. But those, you know, what, what the heroes of the season are her and, yeah, like her king. And I think the king is definitely Alan, you know? <laughs> they're like the homecoming king and queen of the entire series. So, you know, like even when they're on screen where you're just like. <gasps> yes. That's so true. I totally agree. Alan is such a good host. I was saying the same thing while like RuPaul always, you know, gets best hosts for the Emmy and stuff. But Alan, he is gonna, you know, he might steal one from RuPaul, right? Like, he's so well good. Deserved. Well so deserved. Good. Well deserved. He mm-hmm. kills it as host. I'm obsessed mm-hmm. with him. And mm-hmm. making fun of them, the shade. I've never seen somebody run Ooh. so slow. Like, when they were doing something with the, with the hay, and he was sitting on the hay with his dog, 
I mean the shade of just these one-liners. It made me think like, is somebody writing for him? But it can't be unless they're just like, Alan, say this, Alan, and it gets, unless he has a, an earpiece in it, but he's like, he just would make fun of them for not being able to do things. And it was hilarious. He was so good. It's time for our game, red flag, green flag, one, two, three. Okay, so yes. Shelby and I are going to ask y'all some questions. You got to give us your hot take, what you think, your okay. honest thoughts. Okay, I'll ask Wa. I'll ask <laughs> you this question. Is it a red flag to throw a teammate under the bus to save yourself? So like Dan and Phaedra, that situation. Yes, it's a red flag. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I agree. It's desperate. It's a desperate move, you know, and, and for Dan, he, yeah, I, he thinks he wants to say that he was like, you know, in a de desperate situation, but the thing about it is he just let himself get boiled alive and then made a horrible last ditch effort, but it was just, he deserved his fate because he, he did nothing to warrant getting out of it, except ruin the bet who tried to try to take away the best version and best thing of the show for us so i mean that's what we hate that's why we hate dan because we love phaedra and we're like well we're not gonna watch the show without her and dan if you had won it would have just been your show my god what a horrible life what a horrible world you want us to live in like dan for the rest of my life your discernment means nothing to me i don't live in a dan world dan's tough i'm aligned not a fan so chris mm -hmm. is it a green flag to align with players from your same network or show. Now, I'm going to say obviously, but what a true player would do would then have the secret alliances. Everyone in Big mm. Brother, you have to like, you're in more than one alliance. Of course, you're in the alliance that you have to be in. It makes sense. And people are going to view you that way. You have Because if you, for some reason, were to shun protection you would look like a crazy person so instead you make nice with everyone and yes you have your network but then across the breakfast table you start to make eyes at someone who you feel like you can have with you to give you the scoop and to you know like you get to offer someone a secret side alliance so that you both get protection and it's very smart to do so. We actually, I feel like, didn't see that much smart game playing till the very end. Peter was like, last ditch effort of like, I'll be friends with the traitors. Yeah, I'll be friends with them now. And it's like, oh, you should have been doing this before. You should have like tried to have a secret alliance with people. If you ha weren't so, you know, like yeah. segregating in your own clique, then mm -hmm. you would have been more trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a green, it's a much, it's like 10 green flags. It's like necessary. It's it's the upper level part of the game. Like if you think you're, you can't just like charade around the world where like you're just like, I'm in Bravo and I'll always be Bravo. Like, you know, you should be across the board winking at John, you know, trying to hold hands with, you know, like CT or whatever it is to be like, yeah. mm -hmm. I'll get you on my side. Totally. Such a good point. Because I think, most people did not do that. I'm trying to think if anyone had like that secret alliance outside of their clique. They didn't. Everyone no. was so focused on their own groups. But if Phaedra right. had had like a clear secret alliance with CT or someone else, maybe it would have helped her game. Absolutely. Totally. Chris, this is why you have to be on the show. You have all these plans, like the secret alliance. You'd crush it. Oh, wait till you see the tartan I have. I mean, I've already been obsessed with like Christmas <laughs> clads. Just... Wait, wait to see my my wardrobe. Ugh. Wait to see my headbands. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and berets and gloves. Yeah, all so of it. Gloves. All of it. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted the behind the scenes of like, where y'all really sleeping? Mm. These fake like vi videos of people like in their bed, like having a glass of champagne before they go to sleep in their silk jammies. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love all this. So fake, but I love it. Because mm -hmm. they would even have like these moments of them where they'd be like, okay, now act scary. Because then they'd be like, like in their chamber, they would have to be like, <laughs> look at the P footage of them, like, you know, like waking up, like, you know, like, I heard a, heard a noise. Is it a traitor? I love that. Um, her, writing in a that, journal? Like, we're not yeah, writing in a I journal. Can't, like, a poem, honey. I know that both of y'all have said that you want to go on the show, you'd be really good. So most of the times it's like reality stars. Like what show would you be on to get to traders? Oh, 90 day fiance. 
They're not oh. on the show. No, I Do know, but not yet. Pick? I know, but could you imagine Natalie on Traders, Chris? I, I would love it. Oh, I, it's funny because Traders is a beautiful, Mike. perfect show. And remember how there was a show called House of Villains that looked like it was going to be great and it was also a cast yeah. of characters and it just wasn't that good, but like yeah. Anfisa was on it. I would love yeah. to see, yeah, I would love to see, you know, like a 90 day person on this kind of show. But I think that if I was to be on a show to prep me for the show, I would have to be on Big Brother because Big Brother is the only one mm. where you go to a 90 day boot camp where you are living with them. Again, these people are not living in their like B, B roll, beautiful suites in the Scottish a castle i read somewhere they're staying at a airport hotel which is fine you know god bless but big brother you're literally for 90 days sleeping on the cbs radford lot in a weird room where you can't you know like tear off the lights which it's like a nightmare mm -hmm. camp but at the same time you will be the best game player and you'll probably lose like 40 pounds because you like are literally working out all day and you get to eat slop all the goddamn time i feel like it'd be like going to boot camp for traders which, which would then feel mm. like a spa you know you, who stays in a hotel at the airport none of those people from traders stay in that scottish hotel oh sorry great. stay in the sorry stay mm. in the scottish castle at night they all go home oh to a hotel they all go to mm. oh oh I yeah i thought you said an airport hotel and i was like that's even worse by the Ed right. edinburgh airport Oh, oh, yikes. They couldn't get them a nicer hotel. <laughs> That's what they say. They just get ferried back and forth. I love the answer of going on Big Brother. I feel like that would be really good preparation for traders, even though Dan was really bad. But <laughs> I know. Yeah. Janelle, too. She was a little too loud. Like, yeah. Put a target on her back. Totally. Yeah. I feel like Shelby and I, we've talked about this on the podcast. Like, we want to go on the amazing race together. We would do so well. Producers, please, if you're hearing mm -hmm. us, come on, we're some ready. Show. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, overall, like, what did y'all think of Traders season two? Is it a wait or a watch? You watch, watch. it right now. You watch this. Sh you watch it and you enjoy it. And by the way, I'm jealous. I wish I could watch it again with you fresh eyes. You watch as well. 100% a watch. Personally, I'm debating if I should watch like the international versions because I know that they have like a UK version and Australia. it's based on a, yeah, Australia. So I'm like, huh, should I just do, should I just commit and deep dive into all of them? Because I really wow. like the US one so much. Mm -hmm. Dive into those Scottish waters. I think part of it for me is, is that I'm interested in knowing the people and seeing how they play. So I don't know if I'd be able to watch the Australian one. Mm -hmm. and be as interested if i didn't know anyone if i couldn't root for anyone because i knew them but i don't know so mm -hmm. that's yeah. fair i think it helps that we knew phaedra and like pilot pete and like we're familiar with a lot of the people now on to our what to watch segment so i'm so excited uh traders got renewed for a third season so Ooh. get ready for that yes can't wait <laughs> we all want to see on season three of the traders <laughs> so chris but beyond chris who else <laughs> god i think i want all 90 days i want natalie i want anfisa like, i want weird people like i want tlc people like i want christine from sister wives you know like i need to see like uh, what's you know like i need to see like some i need to see this woman out of like utah you know like let's get her out let's take her to, take her to scotland honey and just like be like let's see what she's like without cody I also think there's a lot of Big Brother people they could go back to. I would like to have the guy from um, Love is Blind season five, the one who put tears in his eyes. Andrew, I think his name was. Oh my gosh, Him. yes. <laughs> I love that. We need Love is Blind universe Love people. is Blind would be yeah. great. That's a good yeah. one. What about you, Laura? Um, I'm trying to think because, of course, there's like Survivor people like this amazing black woman Michaela like she would be so good on it um Natalie from Survivor like oh, the Sri Lankan one of the twins yes, like she yes. would be great on Traders and also I was thinking just random um stars who I would just love to see on the show someone like Honey Boo Boo like how amazing would that be <laughs> to see her interact yes. with Alan absolutely amazing Honey Boo Boo against yeah. mm -hmm. someone from Big Brother would be like but could you imagine someone who like 
doesn't understand that there's a game even happening. Mm, yeah. 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 Sheree. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Sheree, Sheree 2.0. <laughs> About Touché someone Sheree. like Rachel Lindsay, like a former bachelorette. Oh, like Rachel a lawyer. Lindsay. Like a lawyer. she would be good. She's yes. smart. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I like her. I also feel like picking people from some of the zeitgeisty shows recently, like Vanderpump Rules. I feel like you could put Tom Sandoval on there. He, who knows how he would do, but I feel like they got to continue to pick zeitgeisty people from these shows that'll bring mm-hmm. people in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So many good options. So Wa and Chris, what are things that you're currently watching right now? Oh, did we mention 90 Day Fiance? <laughs> yes. Did we mention that? Uh, no, I'm actually watching, binge watching The Good Wife. Um, I was watching all of the Star Wars things in order. Um, so for a while there, I was watching the animated Star Wars clone something, clones, Clone Wars. Um, and I really like Picard, so I'm a, I'm a Trekkie. Mm. So um, I'll get back into Picard once uh, that finishes. And then obviously at the top of my list is RuPaul's Drag Race. I am watching U- UK versus the world. I am watching the Philippines season two, and I am watching oh regular <laughs> regular american uh Love that one so that's what i'm watching nice. who do you think's gonna win season 15 season 16 of drag race um i can tell you what i hope doesn't i hope that plain jane does not win Agreed. i would like for safira to win yes. and i need for maya to have been gone three episodes ago the Queen of Flips? No. Oh, uh, no. I would rather have uh, Hershey come back. I mm-hmm. need her to go, and I also need her to put a corset on. Okay, bye. <laughs> I, I love the take. I love the take. How about you, Chris? Love is Blind is about to be dropped. Uh, the reunion, I'm excited about that. It was Ooh, uh, so good. I watched True Detective and uh, Feud Chipotle. Truman, I'm sorry, Capote versus the Swans. I am only now watching Yellow Jackets, so I've been watching Yellow Jackets and really enjoying that. But I'm excited by the Love is Blind reunion. It's on the top of my list. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, y'all, we have made it to the end of our episode. Can't believe it's it. It's crazy. Been this so has much been so fun. much fun. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. much fun. Thank you again both so- for being here. It's literally been a blast. It's also just great to have fellow reality TV stands here to like dive into like the peak reality TV show, The Traders season two, which <laughs> I have loved. Yep. And before we end, we'd love for y'all to let the audience know where they can find you again and all things docu CDs. Yeah, so if you guys were listening to this and you thought, oh my God, those girls are so hilarious and I want to support them, you can join us on patreon.com slash jockeysweeties for $10 a month. We have exclusive content such as a live every first Monday of the month, as well as uh, Love is Blind, which is what we're doing only on Patreon. So if you're interested in any of that content, please go on ahead and find us at patreon.com slash jockeysweeties. Um, and you can also find us on the free feed anywhere you listen to podcasts on patreon.com slash docusweeties but if you can't do that chris will tell you other ways to support us chris hi it's been me it's been chris i'm chris alfera on all your social medias and we are also docusweeties wherever you listen to podcasts and on the social medias at docusweeties the person talking before me is my co-host and that's wahama lino and she's just call me wah on all the socials as well um but this has been so lovely laura shelby thank you so much i mean like from sisters who watch to friends who watch this is like so easy and you know a blast to talk about and like it feels just like we have you know talked about so many shows before so uh and we got to be the podcast convention we did it yay yeah so yeah the (laughs) follow-through yeah Yeah, we'll actually see you in march so yeah see you at the end of march this this month maybe maybe i'll make an appearance we'll see okay Um, you can bless us if you want to laura (laughs) this has been so much fun it really does feel like we just chat all the time about tv shows it's so fun to 
meet fellow girlies who love reality TV just as much as us. We're so passionate about it. So it's been a blast having y'all on the pod. So if you love this episode, go support Docky Sweeties wherever you stream podcasts, all over social media. And if you enjoyed this episode of Sisters Who Watch, make sure you give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us a review. Just go support us on all our social media channels at Sisters Who Watch. We appreciate the support. Yes, we're on TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. You name it, we're there. You can also email us at sisterswhowatch at gmail.com. We have Q&As and polls on Spotify. We just want to hear from y'all, and we're super grateful for the support. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for having us. Bye. 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 Bye.